have so many people to thank you. Um, I'd be here all night. But I want to say thank you to a, a few people. Um, one uh, is a professor I had when I first started my doctoral program at Harvard Divinity School. Um, I learned a new theory. It was called womanist ethics. I had no idea what it was, but I was delighted to know that it was an African-American fierce woman who was teaching it. She's here tonight. I hope she doesn't grade me too hard. Uh, she did, certainly, when I was taking her course. And I certainly pissed off with these late papers and um, lame excuses. Um, I tried to do nicey-nicey by walking her dog. <laughs> but that damn dog was crazy. <laughs> But I want to give thanks to the Reverend Dr. Joan Martin of Episcopal Divinity School. When I first came to, to Boston, Eva was the first friend I had and really showed me the ropes. And Eva, I can't thank you enough. Um, I came up here not looking for a partner, but damn it, I found one. <laughs> and she'd been with me, God bless her, for 18 years. <laughs> and she knows I'm good and crazy. <laughs> but so too is she. <laughs> but I would be remiss if I didn't thank her for her support. So Dr. Thea James, thank you. I'm used to speaking particularly as a black minister extemporaneously, but to avoid a lapse of memory, or better yet, a Clinton Eastwood moment, I brought some notes. GLAD is now a road map for our other generations that want to open their doors to people and communities of color. It really has executed a multicultural and a participatory model of serving a wide range of communities, both locally and nationally. But that has not always been the case. And I have been one of GLAD's most persistent, vocal, pain in the ass, <laughs> which makes this moment so meaningful to me. I'll always remember May 7th of this year. I was lounging on the sofa watching a rerun episode of the Bernie Mac show when the FedEx truck stopped in front of the house. The mail courier handed me a letter from GLAD. And I said, hmm. And it stated that I had been selected for this year's awardee. Needless to say, I was stunned, and I thought they were drunk. <laughs> My initial encounter with GLAD was contentious. GLAD, to me, was just another one of those national gay organizations that didn't speak to the needs of communities of color, both locally and nationally. And a war words were being exchanged, my opinions and those of LGBT communities of color nationwide. And it was being captured in my column, The Religion Thing, for the now defunct Boston-based LGBT paper in Newsweekly. As you know, in November of 2003, Massachusetts became the first state where same-sex couple could marry because of GLAD's victory in the case Goodridge. In February, though, of 2005, I was reporting the tensions here in Massachusetts and that they were mounting along the color line of LGBT communities over the issue of marriage for same-sex couple. When the state legislator was about to rev up again, to debate the issue, and with very little time for white, queer, 
religious and political machines to what I call colorize what had been from its inception uh, a white movement, voices from African-American queer organizations and communities of color were speaking up about our absence from the conversation. To the surprise of white organizations, both African-American, LGBTQ, and straight communities had much to say about the white political machines, appropriation of the language of the black civil rights movement, and done without participation by people of color. How the marriage debate should have been framed in a way that speaks truth to various LGBT communities of color and classes had not been considered. The same-sex marriage debate had brought much consternation and polarization between black and white queer communities. And much of the finger pointing of the genesis of the ill-framed discussion was aimed at GLAD. Viewed by so many as a lily white organization, many people of color felt that GLAD replicated much of the same race and class division presented in our federal judicial system. While the marriage debate was strategically framed as an upper class family issue movement, people of color felt that the strategy may have won in court, but not in the court of opinion. With the LGBT movement persistently donning a white face and all other faces of color, marginal at best and invisible at worst, communities of color decided that they needed to speak up. And somebody heard our lament. And that person I'll always remember was in April of 2005. It was Lee Swislow, the director of GLAD. She came to our annual Bay at Ruston breakfast. When GLAD reached out to our communities of color, inviting a dialogue for an inclusive reframing of the marriage debate, the collective anger and frustration that LGBT communities of color collectively felt toward the organization began to dissipate. And in recognizing the need to look more deeply at diversity issues, this is just some of what GLAD accomplished. In 2005, the GLAD board asked the executive director to develop a diversity plan. There were concrete actions associated with this plan, including recruiting more people of color to GLAD's board and staff, looking at consultants and vendors that they used, and reaching out to people of color and minority-owned businesses. They also looked at diversity reflected in who got the Spirit of Justice Award. Uh, they reached out to diversity communities through open forum discussions, dealing with topics like looking at the similarities between African American and LGBT struggle for civil rights. They also had an open forum that looked at HIV AIDS and the politics of invisibility and at the future of religion and LGBT equality in America. So not surprisingly, this year, GLAD received the Boston Bar Association Bar Award for Diversity and Inclusion. Because of GLAD's outreach to communities, yeah. Because of GLAD's outreach to communities of color, more and more lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered queer people of color began to marry. Their efforts generated discussion among us and in our communities in the context of our families and our lives. So the idea that once was thought of as an anathema to black queer identity, marriage in our LGBT communities is being celebrated and it's on the rise. And many of us now proudly walk down the aisle to tie the knot. I think glad also said we can shut Irene up finally, and indeed they did. King told a mixed audience in 1967 that the revolution for human rights is opening up unhealthy areas in American life and permitting a new and wholesome healing to take place. 
Eventually, the civil rights movement will have contributed infinitely more to the nation than the eradication of racial justice. As a religion columnist, I try to inform the public of the role religion plays in discrimination against lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. Because homophobia is both a hatred of the other and it is usually acted upon in the name of religion. So by reporting religion in the news, I try to highlight how religious intolerance and fundamentalism not only shatters the goal of American democracy, but also aid in perpetuating other forms of oppression, such as racism, sexism, classism, and anti-Semitism, just to name a few, a few. I want to conclude by saying that in our effort to do anti-oppression work, let us be united in this journey together. We are infinitely more powerful together than separate. We're infinitely more healthier, really, in this struggle together. We come here to this glad event holding on to a vision because our life work is bent on helping others and it is arched towards justice. Let us see that it is today that our best work can be done and must be done in the face of our own self-respect as activists. The Yoruba proverb states, if we stand tall, it is because we stand on the backs of those who come before us. It is our ancestors who have taught us how to make it in broken places, and they have also taught us how to make a way out of no way. They have taught us that we must climb, must lift as we climb, and they have taught us that we must always see our work in relationship to one another. When I was finally able to calm down from the shock that I was receiving this award, I realized this event would also be a way for me to thank GLAD. So I wrote back stating, I'm honored to be this year's awardee, but I've not been in this struggle alone. The interconnectedness between my work and that of GLAD is best depicted in the African proverb that states, I am because we are, and since we are, therefore I am. Now, if I had enough black people in the audience, I would have gotten an amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. And my social justice work in churches and industry comes to fruition because of GLAD's activism in the courts on behalf of us all. So I wanna leave with this. The infighting that goes on in our LGBT communities and organizations are all symptoms of what's broken in us. In the face of our own self-respect. The fighting among us must stop. The distrust among us must stop. The competitiveness among us must stop. Why? Because we must remember that the whole world is watching Massachusetts in terms of LGBT justice. It's really up to us how we present ourselves. And it can be like this. United we can stand as a prophetic movement or divided we can fall as a petty people. Thank you. Thank you.